Yo, welcome back to more Owari Monogatari episode 5. So last time, thank goodness for Hanakawa with whatever's going on with Araragi being taken advantage of by Ogi. Clearly, either using like her understanding of him or just some power as an apparition or hypnotism, spell, call it whatever you want. Obviously, Araragi is kind of being sucked into that. Repeated, we see repeated examples. So, such on-the-nose examples. Like, even the specific time she used last time was just... Them pretty much showing how on the nose it is that she is just blatantly making these things up. Like, you said you'd meet me here at, like, 3.42, and, oh, you promised we'd have non-revolving sushi. And, like, oh, here's a reason to invite me to Oikura, because I, I can be um, the middleman, and I can, much like I helped you with that situation earlier, I can help you with this one, too, you know. And probably, but, you know, I still don't really know what Ogi's aim is here. And, I, you know, like Hanakawa, I'm concerned. Uh, so thankfully Hanakawa was able to step in, ended up busting out her chest as the reason, like, I'll let you touch them, classic, classic Monogatari. Um, and then just immediately cut to showing that he went with her. Araragi later went into saying that, you know, seeing her willing to go that far for that situation, even though he can't really understand the danger she's talking about when it comes to Ogi, still decided to listen to her out of respect for that, so I really, I really appreciated that. So, uh, <laughs> obviously we know Hanakawa, Hanakawa was correct with uh, how much uh, Araragi would go on to suffer with what would happen within the next six months. But, you know, to see this now is like, oh man, it's like, w before watching just the, the train wreck, it's like... But, uh, you know, thankfully this was a little win there on that part, but, you know, hopefully we can maybe get to understand more what's going on they're just now seeing just how even like right after they met like it's because as soon as ogi met araragi like immediately taking him to that classroom to face that past trauma and then like to that house oikura's old house as we learned of course to to revisit that and it's just oh my god just from the get-go ogi has immediately been sus there was no build-up there was no like even like with ogi joking it's as if i was born a few days ago or something like I feel like there's a lot of hints and in, in things there, but I, I, either way, um, very, very interesting stuff and very freaky stuff. But still, it, at least at the very least, it's cool to learn about Aradagi, to learn about this new character Oikura that got introduced to us that I, I had no idea about. You know, um, pretty cool. So that being said, let's see now what happens between Oikura and Aradagi. Now that he's come to meet her at her apartment, she hasn't come to school. You know, with her coming back at the same time of these events happening. And then, you know, having that very emotional breakdown. And seeing Araragi in the classroom, we, we know how that went. Who knows how this is going to go now, but uh, I feel like it's definitely going to be interesting. So, let's just keep going. Let's see. Beginning the episode in 3, 2, 1. Good question. And then he said he found out the answer. Are we going to find out how Nadako was related to that? In grade school. And, yeah, we're with Sengoku, yeah. So this goes back even further. Lala. Weird. So weird. Wait, what? They brought her home? Whoa. Wow. 
What the heck? Jesus. It's so weird that not even this was remembered. This is like a big deal. Of her own accord. She just left. Well, that's a big deal. What the hell? A lot of weird things, this arc. I want to see this talk with Oikura. That first scene was important because last episode it was like, oh, you found out? I guess we're not going to learn that. But it's cool that we got this now about why he remembers that she wouldn't have known that about his parents. Here we go. There are the pajamas. Arara. Same. That, what is that text? It's like a password being entered. TV on the floor. Yeah, you ate that punch. Oh. What the heck? What? What? Oh. What a healing power. It seems that she's okay physically. Nah. The head tilt so deep. Even back then. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh god. Anakawa. Oh my god, that was impressive. Now this is a mediator. <laughs> oh. 
All right, let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be rough. This is someone who's been abused, neglected, is obviously very hard on herself. <laughs> Baka mitai. Oh, God. It happens often. Oh boy. <laughs> Hanakawa, good job. <laughs> Nothing to throw. That was an angry ellipsis. I just feel sad. Oh my God. This is so fucked. Oh my god. Some heavy shit, man. I don't even know what to say. I just want to listen. was gone what 
She just left? Where did she die? Oh. What? Smiled like her mother. Cruel. Cruel. No wonder she's fucked up. I don't blame her for wanting to leave that behind. It's very, very barren in here. I don't even know how to, like, talk about this. If anything. Oh boy, what do you respond to that with? Oh? Hmm. Where'd she leave the room from? Yeah, because she left while she was gone, right? But... Oh, she didn't have the key. Locked it before leaving. Yeah, because it was locked when she tried. She's like, why do you care? <laughs> wow. I guess when you're, you're raised like that, that is the norm. Whew. lie he really doesn't remember 
Because, yeah, that, that goes back even back then, seeing their family compared to hers. Jesus. When she saw that there was something better, something different. Because now I'm thinking of Hanakawa and... Jesus. <sighs> That's when she made that whole thing happen. Oh my god. Answer. It just breaks my heart, man. It feels like I'm just really listening to someone's real trauma. This feels so real. I like that. Don't over overestimate what happiness is. You'll save her. You'll be her villain. Hmm. Hmm. from Town Hall.
They'll be back. Nice. Nice. This wasn't gonna work itself out in one visit. Whoa. Find her mother. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I didn't have much to say that episode. That was... I was just li listening to an abuse victim. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to say anything. But, Hanakawa and Araragi, I appreciate that they weren't able to get through to her in this one visit, because obviously that's not realistic. Nor do I expect that from Monogatari, because characters like Hanakawa and a lot of fucked up people in the show, which is pretty much everyone. I mean, everyone's fucked up. But, do get their proper character arcs. But just them being there, like, visiting and then saying, like, we'll be back to visit. That's how we do things for people we care about. That's, that's great, man. And I like what Aradagi said about happiness. Like, it's not heavy. It's not, don't overestimate what it is, like. What is that? Why are they dogs? Dog faces. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have a lot to say during that episode, because I was just listening to this very vivid, very heartbreaking account of someone describing their abuse, and it like, no wonder we could have so fucked up, man. Jesus Christ, you know, getting the full scope of it, of the, her experience with Araragi back to grade school, course knowing they they were cops because they took her in you know from her piece of family and then she left on her on her own accord one day um we know that during that she saw Araragi you know seeing it as showing off their dynamic it was so happy it was like they're zany they're wacky they're weird whatever but they're they're a tight-knit family right and um you know, and it even makes me think back to Hanakawa, and I don't, I don't want to compare, like, traumas and experiences there, but I'm really glad Hanakawa was there to, like, give her perspective and to, to show that support, you know, as someone who's gone through what she's gone through. Um, like, it's different, but, it, you know, still, just, even her just being there, like, to give this care for Oikura. I'm so glad Hanakawa's the one who came and not Ogi, because while Ogi, I'm sure, would have been effective in some way, just because Ogi is good, but it, I feel like it would have been in bad faith. Like, whatever goal Ogi has in in either messing with Araragi's, like, mind or memories, because, again, even, like, with... Even with Ogi saying, like, remember, you said we'd meet up here at this specific time, or you'd take me out for non-revolving sushi. Like, even that, uh, paired with the fact that Araragi just very weirdly forgets these major things. Like, I, I'm like, that's gotta be related or the same thing, because that's, that's ridiculous, how, how he would just straight forget that. It's one thing to be like, oh... I didn't care about that back then, but maybe I was wrong, or like I didn't think much of that back then, right? That's like that's one, that's one thing. But to not remember completely is ridiculous, and it's like, what the hell is going on there? So he's kind of handicapped in that way, because you know, because he's facing the brunt of this. But even still, like you know, I guess kind of like me, I was sitting here. They they stood there and listened to to Oikura, which I, I appreciated. They. Let her go. Um, Hanakawa just stepping in to catch the, the teacups from being thrown. Um, she described it, man, and it was... Yeah, man, it just... I, I felt uncomfortable. I felt sad. I just... You know, her, her voice actor killed it. You know, you guys weren't lying. She she did... Um, she does incredible, man. That was... That was vivid. Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, just, just that range of emotions was really just so fucking real. But I, I love the... The note had ended on with Hanakawa, you know, saying that they were continuing to visit. And Aranagi's speech especially, right? Because 
when she's talking about not being able to bear happiness and not deserving like i'd rather be like he, him saying like happiness is not heavy don't overestimate happiness you know don't despise happiness don't despise yourself love yourself he says it love yourself right like you can despise me but don't despise yourself because you know we see her self-hatred there as well you know due to her we saw when she was left with her mother in that just very dank depressing house you know with her mother locked in her room and um and there was even some weird stuff there about you know how she left there's like a mystery there about her mother of like almost as if like her mother didn't leave like willingly or like there's some someone did something there too i don't know there's something weird there um Especially given Oikidas' request at the end about wanting to find her mother, which, you know, saying I'll come back to school, I'll even apologize to Central Gahara. So I'm, I'm very curious how that's going to go. I'll, I'll keep that in the back of my mind. But yeah, man, um, so just the self hatred, of course, that just was, she naturally developed just due to, and like just the thing about, you know, saying like, well, you know, what did I do to deserve this? You know, just very, just real, just thoughts. And I, I can imagine if you've gone through something like this, a lot of what she says probably resonates with you. A lot just because it was so vivid i can just picture how people could relate to this or even like people i know like i could probably show them that and it probably resonate with them a lot right i can i can I can only imagine so yeah you know Araragi saying that i really appreciate and i also appreciate the fact that you know they can't obviously fully get to her in just one visit because you know this is a deep-rooted thing you know oikura is a I think is in good character you know she deserves her character arc and monogatari has handled character arcs you know very well up to this point it's a great show so yeah i, I look forward to i don't know maybe for uh some salvation for oikura by the end of this you know she she um she is truly unfortunate and just just seeing just the varying thoughts like i i have to blame you Adaragi. if i don't blame you i can't i can't go on like i can't just blame my parents because you know because then she goes into this this despising herself and feeling like she shouldn't be alive and just we know where that road can go to and it's like oh fuck man it just got so damn real that i'm sorry i just i couldn't i didn't have much to say just right out the gate i just didn't really have much to say yeah i'm just going back through and a lot of the language she uses like wanna uh i wanted i'd rather be steeped ankle deep in lukewarm unhappiness and bear all of it keep my shoes soaking wet for as long as i live that's a very vivid image because you can imagine your shoes soaking wet and just that uncomfortableness that unhappiness of just, just it's like a vivid just like she has so many things like that throughout this and just oh my like it was like fucking poetry how she was describing like you know her emotions and her feelings and and like not like i'm the only unfortunate one and even like it was just such a wide range of just so many like nuanced emotions and just heartbreaking things i can't even like that is so crazy yeah, that's, that's, that's insane writing that they captured, like, all of that. So, yeah, hell of an episode, man. And uh, now with this ending, you know, of her asking them to find her mother, I'm very curious how that's going to go, given how the weird circumstances around her mother leaving. Um, like, we, we know how it went between them and, like, as far as Oikido and her mother. But, yeah, that's, like, a weird, that's a weird thing. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what that ends up being, if that, if they go down that road. Um, either way. You know, look forward to more Oikura visits. You know, maybe um, some progress there as she continues to get support from Hanakawa and Araragi. That'd be great. Because, uh, yeah, as far as, like, Araragi forgetting things there, it seems like we've reached the, the, the bottom of that pit as far as seeing how far back it goes, seeing the full extent of, like, the reasons Oikura did what she did in middle school, you know, after learning what, what's happened in grade school this episode, why she tried to, like, get help from him during that point, and... The reasons like she despises him and why she has to tell herself to despise them because if she doesn't if she she's just like it all she's gonna fall like she has to hold on to that but it's there's so much like oh my god there's just so much fucked up things here that i it's like yeah i can't even i feel like i keep saying it just because i have to express how much i appreciated this one but yeah that's i think that's all i gotta say actually um about this one um and goddamn, that makes me look forward to the rest of the arc. You know, we're only, you know, five episodes deep. And I know, I think there's a, a second season to Awadi, I believe. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see whenever we get there. But, uh, yeah, I look forward to whatever the rest of this 
ends up being man this this was a very significant step and i'm also very concerned about what could potentially happen if um with whatever move ogi makes next because we don't really know how things turn out here um we i feel like after we finish owadi in hindsight if we look back to like hana or you know the, the arcs that take place within these next six months especially like you know what araragi is what he's not able to do for people and just those kinds of things i feel like things there will become clearer with the context we're getting now from owadi and in what's happening now with oikura um from right now i i like where we're at I, I like you know getting the full truth from oikura that they were able to just stand there and you know listen to her and give the response that they did and, and show that support because that's like everything just to be there for her because no one no one has been there for her right she she hasn't had that and that, that's truly unfortunate she did nothing to deserve it of course like i don't you know of course like no no child or anything does anything to deserve that kind of abuse of course like i yeah I, I really hate that mindset because i think it's even um a fallacy right the just world fallacy where it feels like bad or for some reason people have this idea that bad and terrible things happen to people who deserve them like car accidents are just terrible like no shit shit just happens right and it's 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 fucking terrible but at the very least she has this now so i look forward to the potential happiness that oikuna can maybe find you know by the end of the star core maybe more misfortune we'll see either way um yeah that's it for this one please share any thoughts if you have any um, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you want to see even more of my reactions to Awari Monogatari, I will be up to episode 8. Episode 8 will have released at the same time of me posting this on YouTube. So if you want to see my reactions up to that point, they will be immediately available to you if you click my Patreon link in the description and subscribe for $5. Um, that's there if you want to support the channel. Otherwise, once again, thank you very much for watching, as always, and I'll see you next time. Peace.